Hey everybody, it is a new season of Escape This Podcast, but before we get started, I need to prepare you for two things. So you need to get prepared. Are you preparing? Firstly, the same week that this episode has come out, we have started a new seven-part murder mystery on our other show, Solve This Murder. It is coming out at the end of the week, Thursday evening in the US, Friday morning for Australians. So go, and if you've lapsed in your subscription to that podcast, resubscribe, check it out, and get ready. It's a public domain murder mystery where I try and solve the mysterious affair at Styles, which is the first Poirot novel. It is wild, it is ridiculous, it is going to be so much fun. That's the first thing you need to prepare yourself for. The second thing is an entirely new project. This is not our project, but it is one that we sort of helped facilitate and are so excited to see become a thing, which is Enigmarch. Go to enigmarch.com, that's E-N-I-G-M-A-R-C-H, to check it out and prepare, because Enigmarch is an event like NaNoWriMo or, or Inktober or whatever those other fun, ridiculous ones are, where the goal is to create a new puzzle for every day of March. That is 31 days of puzzles, and anybody can get involved. You don't need to be a puzzle designer or a puzzle expert. You just need to enjoy having a go, seeing what's going on, and seeing what other people are making. So check it out. All the information is on the website, but you'll get a prompt every day, and you can make a puzzle or skip a day. You don't have to keep yourself to 31 puzzles. And you can check out what everyone else is making and check out the hashtags. It's going to be so much fun. I'm going to try and be involved. It's a great new thing, and we want to make it as big and widespread as possible. So if you know anyone who likes puzzles, if you've ever wanted to have a crack and you wanted to, and you needed something to push you, if you want to get better at making puzzles, check it out, enigmarch.com. Now that you're prepared for those two things, get prepared for this episode because it's starting right now. Welcome to Escape This Podcast, a show that's a mix between tabletop role-playing and escape room puzzles. This is the first episode of season 10. That sounds like a lot of seasons. It sounds like we've been going for a long time. We cheat by doing two (laughs) seasons a year, but it sounds very impressive. This season, we're changing up our schedule a little bit. This will not be a connected arc like it usually is at the start of the years. We're going to be doing standalone rooms because really we've had so many guest writers and guest game masters come on that Danny just hasn't been able to write a standalone room for a Yeah, that's a long why we're time. doing this. I was missing out. Danny was missing out, and we wanted to, to let her have another go at standalone rooms. I had forgotten how much I've been relying on these overarching stories to carry <laughs> me through my ideas. Yeah, don't need a good puzzle. You can just, like, end on a cliffhanger. Mm. Every episode, we have guests come on to play through an escape room that exists only in Danny's mind and their minds and the collective minds of all of our audience. And this episode, we have two guests. We have Tom Scott and David Bodicum. Welcome. Thanks for having us. I always do this. I introduce you together and then you have to talk over yourselves. Should I learn from my mistakes? (laughs) Yes. Do I? No. Tom, welcome. For the audience at home, I'm sure a lot of them know you and the things that you create, but would you like to give like a rundown of who Tom Scott is? I mean, that's a that's a big question right there. That's something I've been struggling with for thirty something years. Uh, no, I I make stuff for YouTube mostly, videos about science, technology, infrastructure, things in the world, and yeah, I, as it turns out, I also enjoy stuff like this. So thank you very much for the invite. We're excited to have you on. We've been big fans of yours for a long time. Yeah, watched you on YouTube a lot. Watched your uh, game creations. Went back and found your Only Connect season, which David was the question editor for. We didn't know each other well back then, but yes, that's one of the first times we met. What a great segue. David, would you like to tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do? Well, I initially was a management consultant, and then I turned to become a puzzle author and TV producer, and more recently a podcaster myself on a show called TV Show and Tell, trying to give people a a bit behind-the-scenes look at how television is made. I co-present with Justin Scroggy, and we've had one very successful pilot series, and we've decided to sort of keep it going. So we're just about to start off with a, a second series, and we've got a number of interviews already in the bag, and um, we've been delighted with the feedback we've had so far. Wonderful. Well, we have the two of you on to play through a room together. I hope that working together again will go very well for you. 
So this is an escape room based podcast. So the question we ask all of our guests is, what is your escape room experience? Tom, would you like to start? What is your escape room experience? I've played a few, um, not in the last couple of years for obvious reasons, but I'd say probably about half a dozen or so over, uh, over time. I, I have fairly strong opinions on, on good escape rooms and things like that. And the trouble is that there was sort of a glut of them in London that mm. were very much, we put some locks and some things in the room and put a vague story around them. And there were a couple that were very, very good that were, that were sort of doing a whole immersive story thing as opposed to, yeah, this is a craze. We're going to cash in on it. And mm. there was a point when I went to a couple and they were great. And then I went to a few and it's like, this is, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going probably gonna to stop doing this for a while. <laughs> Fair. It's one of those things that's interesting about the industry in that there's so much collaboration because people know that for a lot of people, you go to an escape room and it's your first one and you, and the right. whole industry benefits if your first room is a brilliant room, yeah. which is why there's a lot of cooperation. It's a, it's, it's a very interesting sort of dynamic. David, what about you? What is your escape room experience? I've done a couple of escape rooms in real life, but I've also helped devise an escape room. Um, a friend of mine who is a magician called Paul Andrews runs a company called Clue Adventures, who runs escape rooms in London. And he was putting together a magic-themed escape room. And he, he got, got in contact with me and said, do you have any ideas for puzzles we could put in this? So I just faxed over a whole load of different um <laughs> Uh, sort of ideas of things he could put in it and, and like quite a lot of those ideas made it into the the final room so um because it's magic themed things that would happen to you that were like magical so like you might open a drawer and it was empty and then it would say sort of like shut the drawer and open it again you do that and when it opened it the second time it was full of stuff oh no. we had that happen in a real magic themed room i don't know what they did but it's magic they cast a spell danny <laughs> whatever so the other aspect of the show is that it's escape rooms mixed with a sort of tabletop role-playing vibe. So we'll go reverse order this time. David, what is your tabletop role-playing experience? I've seen people play it, and I'm very happy for the people to play it. <laughs> <laughs> I have met a few people who have had some personal <laughs> relationship issues caused by tabletop gaming, unfortunately. <laughs> so I suppose that might have slightly put me off. But I, my excuse is that I am so busy trying to create content for other people that I don't necessarily get all that much time to play very long-form stuff. I, I, mm. I tend to mm. just sort of play shorter games with my kids that last about 20 minutes. Fair, fair. Uh, and, and Tom, what is your tabletop role-playing experience? Tried it once at university, not for me. The, the <laughs> bit of my brain that does role-playing doesn't really work. Because I was coming into it with basically no knowledge of what it was other than knowing that Dungeons & Dragons was a thing. Mm -hmm. And like, it took someone like actually telling me, no, this isn't, this isn't a game you win. This is, this is, you have, <laughs> this is a character. You are, play, you are working. I, no, I, ju I just immediately met, tried to metagame the whole thing and exploit the rules to win, which is really not the point of it. But it turns out that's how my brain works. Mm. <laughs> well, on the plus side, in this one, you do not have to role play as anyone but yourselves in particular, and you can Excellent. obviously win. <laughs> the perfect role playing game. <laughs> and you don't have to roll any dice. That's the one bit I was good at. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I think we are ready to get going. Are you, are you ready? Do you have your note taking implements at hand? Yep. Brains my pen fired paper up. poised yes my Perfect. fingers are poised on a keyboard because that's because right. i'm not going to be able to read my own handwriting because because he's not an old man like david he's a hip <laughs> oh, young man oh. of the future wow that that's unduly harsh on both of us <laughs> <laughs> all right well i think we're ready to go danny would you like to whisk us away it's taken you 90 minutes to drive out here, and it was about 20 minutes ago that you first started noticing the smell. You've never been sure if it's the hay or the animals or the stuff that comes out of the animals, but all farms have exactly the same odour, and you quietly resign yourself to the fact that that's going to be your odour for the next few days as well. It's hot, it's dry, it hasn't rained since last Saturday, so you know that you're going to get even riper as the day goes on. But you have to be here. Without you, your friend Lily's business could be doomed. Lily is a farmer. She does plants, she does animals, the whole thing. And once a week, she boxes up her freshest produce and takes it to the Sunday market to sell. Well, 
Last Saturday night, she picked her right plants, she boxed them, as usual, but she also took one or two for her own dinner. And overnight, she got ill. Terribly ill. All the orifices kind of ill. <laughs> Thanks. Obviously, she cancelled her market stall for the weekend at great financial cost, and sadly, a few days later, she even needed to go to hospital to get some fluids put back in her. It's now the following Saturday, and she's due to get out later tonight in around six hours. She'll have just enough time to pick and box the latest batch for tomorrow's market. The one problem, she has no idea what exactly on her farm made her sick. And she can't possibly send out tainted food, she'll be ruined, but she also can't afford to miss another market day. So she's called you, begging for your help, pleading with you to search her premises to find out where the problem is. So, here you are. The smell alone warrants throwing up, but it must have been something worse than that to take down Lily. She's a professional. It can't have just been the food itself. There must have been some external factor to make it go bad. Some sort of introduced bacteria, a new insect disease, maybe some bad fertilizer. You don't have a clue, so you're going to have to look around carefully. Lily said that some of her design choices around here were a bit quirky, but she was too sick to waste time on details. You don't see anything strange up front. In the northwest corner is a small greenhouse. And in the northeast is a roofed pagoda. Not to be confused with the other similar yes, words. Yes, it's not a pagoda and it's not a pergola. It's a pergoda. It's a roof on sticks. <laughs> it's a roof on sticks. And underneath that, there are stacks of boxes and a couple of signs. It looks like it's where Lily puts all the stuff that she's about to take to market. Just south of the greenhouse is a small stable with one horse. Running down the east side of the property is the vegetable patch. You see a scarecrow perched in the centre. And finally, most of the south area is taken up by two wire-fenced animal enclosures. One for pigs, one for sheep, right beside each other. In fact, they share a wire wall. Everything looks perfectly in order. She's had a neighbour feeding the animals, but not touching anything else, so nothing has been disturbed since Lily first got sick. Time to explore and find out what happened. Right. I've got a lovely schematic, and we've got lots of things. I'm always keen to look at reading stuff, so I, I would like to go to the pagoda and look at these boxes and the signs. Yeah, I'm just nodding along here. I was immediately going, there's, there's going to be words there. <laughs> <laughs> we need words. <laughs> Okay, so the boxes first, why not? The boxes, they're neatly stacked and closed, but Lily gave you permission to investigate, so you assume that includes opening things up. Inside, there are heaps of raw vegetables dug up straight from the garden, looking a little bit old now, since they're last week's, presumably, but they're not too bad. Inside the others, there are jars full of mixes of solid and liquid. Definitely a lot of pickled stuff going on here. Okay, and what signs have we got? They're big, but rather flimsy. There are just two of them. One sign has Lily's name and just some of the pictures of her farm branding. The other one, a little more to it, it has some information about a special sale she must have been planning on having at the last market. And in the Zencaster chat, we've got a link to an image for you. So yes, if one of you would like to have a look and describe what you're seeing for the listeners at home. So that says 25% off five shoes. And half off eight shoes. Hmm. So, I mean, those those look like maths puzzles to me. 25% <laughs> off five doesn't quite go. Half off eight is four. <laughs> yes, but 25% off five, if you think of five as F-I-V-E, that does split into quarters. Oh, it does. Yes. So you could maybe have like F-I-V, maybe. That would be five with 25% of, of letters knocked off. And half, the half is, of eight when... doesn't quite work. Half <laughs> of eight would, would be four, which doesn't, doesn't quite work the same way. Yes, unless we're going to chop eight into sort of like a, a vertical line and then you'd, leave, you'd be left with the number three on the right-hand side or you could chop <laughs> through the middle of it the other way and then you'd have a zero. Um, yeah, or you could but, chop through E-I-G-H-T and just end up with E-I-C. Um, but I'm not sure F-I-V-E-I-C is a good word there. That's what I planned on naming my first child. Oh, <laughs> rude time. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fi it's five, like, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's going like the Elon Musk route. Um, 
So it's 25% off five shoes with the five in a numeral, and it's and, and is underlined half off eight. So it's not half of eight, half off eight shoes, again, with the eight in numerals. Also, mm. I'm fairly sure she doesn't sell shoes, which is an interesting one. Should we, should we sort of bank this and assume it'll come in, it'll come in later? or uh... Perhaps, yeah. and you're not wrong. Typically, you don't find many farmers selling stilettos, do you? All right. Is it worth sifting through the heaps of raw vegetables? It feels like were this an escape room in reality, someone would put something at the bottom of the heaps of raw vegetables. <laughs> you don't find anything uh, hidden in the base of them, and the only other thing you could think to do with them would be to eat them, but since you don't quite know what made Lily sick, you're going to hold off on that. Do you quite fancy a pickle, though. <laughs> what vegetables are pickled? Uh, what vegetables pickle best? <laughs> that's, that's, I, some, I know that's some quick improvising cucumber. happening here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh. <laughs> you've found my strength. <laughs> I'll I'll rephrase the question. Is there anything <laughs> strange about the jars? No, nothing particular. You open one up, it smells good and salty. But beyond that, nothing extraordinary. Feels like we've run out of stuff at the pagoda. So... Yeah. That's the... Should we trot over to the greenhouse? Yeah. Okay. Northwest small greenhouse. You head for this greenhouse. You try the door. It's locked. There's a number keypad beside the handle. It does have transparent walls, though. Not a transparent door, which is interesting, but transparent walls all the same, so you can get a good look at what's going on in there. At the back, you can see a row of small plants interspersed with little plus-shaped sprinklers. Along one wall, there are several gardening tools, spades and the like, and a coiled hose. Not attached to anything, though. You see that there is a tap, but it's outside with you. And... Ooh, what's that? On the roof. There is something up there. Way up on the slanted side of the greenhouse roof, you can see, definitely out of reach, a key. Right, okay. So my immediate thought is, get the hose, get inside, get on the tap, spray whatever the thing is off the uh, off the roof. But there's a, there's a lot of steps required to get there. True. And thank you, playtesters took ages to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> um... Number keypad. I'm still wondering if there's a connection between the sign and the number keypad. 25% off five, half off eight. It feels like... Yeah, the problem with number keypads is we don't... It's not like a combination lot where you know how many digits you're looking for. I'm going to do the obvious thing. There are five digits on that sign, which are two, five, five, and eight. I'm just going to punch those into the number keypad to see if it works. You start doing that, and once you hit five digits, that does seem to be this thing's limit. Each one, as you press it, makes a little boring musical note, a bit like a MIDI keyboard sound. Then a little red light flashes and tells you that you haven't got the code right. It does offer you a hint if you want it. <laughs> I, I don't, David's, David's looking sceptical at this point about whether we should take a hint. <laughs> I'm just looking at the word shoes because it's, like, it's, ve it's so very, very close to one of those calculator words. Oh, it is. Yeah, you know when you if you turn oh. it, it ups, upside down, it's like uh, I mean uh, uh, this that is that would really... be five three zero four five. Let's try five three zero four five. I did not realize how many potential r red herrings there were with the word shoes. You don't have a list of all <laughs> calculator words. Oh my god! Uh, another little red light happens, and this time the hint pops up automatically. Perhaps unhelpfully, it looks like a little pixelated picture of a shoe. <laughs> so you're doing something right, but just not quite. Yeah, okay. So we've got this key, we've got a hose inside. So we've got to somehow get the hose from the inside to the outside, presumably. Yeah, the ta so the tap's uh, outside, the hose is inside. So we can't do anything more until we get in here. Should we have a look at the stable that's just south of here? Yeah. You head into the stable and the first thing that you encounter is the horse. She is, I don't know how cross-equatorial this expression is, this horse is an absolute unit. Muscles for days. If she steps on your foot, you do not have a foot anymore. Luckily, she seems pretty relaxed, and she's not bothered by your presence. She's content to watch you as you wander around her farm. Some distance behind her, you see two large boxes. One open-topped, and it looks like it's full of horseshoes and one of them is closed and mysterious. As for the horse herself, she's wearing a saddle with a saddlebag slung on one side. All right. Mm -hmm. 
Should we look in the boxes? That seems... Uh... Particularly, can we count the number of horseshoes that are in the, the open box? You walk behind the horse again. She's totally fine with that. You head over for the horseshoe one. This box of horseshoes is full to the brim. It's very heavy. There are a lot. Counting them feels like it would be a bit of an endeavour. But what you do notice as you're rummaging through them is that each shoe has a special design etched into its surface, along with a tag that looks like a serial number written on it. And as you sift through, you find nine distinct designs, and each design has a different serial number, so you're able to start putting them in little groups. And And again, again, we've got a link for you, and for anybody at home, you can open this link in our show notes. But why don't we swap off, and David, would you like to describe to the audience uh, what this looks like? Okay, so there are indeed nine identical shaped horseshoes. They've all got a tag of a five-digit number attached to them. So, for example, the first one I can see has 93121. The next one has 655514. The other one is 71517. What's interesting about them is that they all have etchings around the, the shape of the horseshoe, and they look awfully familiar to me. I don't know if you know... Yes. Excuse me, I mean, Tom. No, I'm saying the same thing you are. Those are numbers. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hang on. We're missing a number four, I think, unless I'm, unless I'm sorely mistaken there. I can see one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and an X, which I guess is 10. But I don't no, see a I, number I, four there. I think that X is a diagonal four. Oh, it is. You're right. So I think we've got seven, two, three, five. One six eight nine four. Now, what's interesting about the layout of these horseshoes, which I don't know if is relevant, is that they, they you know, if you're going to draw nine things, wouldn't you draw them as a three by three grid? <laughs> you would so, think, wouldn't you? I'm wondering if there's any relevance to the fact that they're on four in the top line, then two in the middle line, and three in the bottom. The only relevance is that the program that I use to draw stuff has a very difficult copy-paste function, so I put (laughs) things where I can get them. Okay. So 25% off five shoes and half off eight shoes. This is a this is a maths thing. I'm gonna I've got a calculator to hand, happily. Absolutely. You've got your phone. (laughs) So shoe number five is one three three seven six. Take 25% off that, you get 10032. And then the other one was half off eight shoes. Shoe number eight is 24170. You halve that, you get 12085. You add those together and you get 22117. That sounds like a five digit code to me. And it also makes a lot more sense now that you think about a farmer selling horseshoes. Yes. <sighs> Do we want to finish looking around the greenhouse first, or should we go and put that code in right away? Uh, let's at least have a, a look at the other box that's locked, yeah. or closed. So this box's lid does not open when you pull on it. It also doesn't have a regular lock. On top of it, what you see are five rectangular indents, three of which have decorative clay tiles resting in them. They have some nice little images on them as well. Yeah, You're finding is... all the imagey bits first. We're doing all the images. On our audio podcast. (laughs) Please come for our pure audio podcast. It's full of pictures. Right. So we've got five rectangles. The top and the bottom one are blank. And then at the middle three, we have sort of horses as if they've been drawn by... Perfectly rendered horses. (laughs) I mean, like, like they're practically Picasso. Exactly. Um... (laughs) Is that Uh, like when Alex Horn... We don't know. That's okay. When Alex Horn came onto our first episode, I had a Christmas wreath image and he said it was good. It was almost a circle. <laughs> I, should, I, should, I, should, I, should, I should name a, a horse artist. George Stubbs. There you go. I think he was famous for, for drawing horses. So, yeah, we've got four horses, then five, then five. But, but they are in is, different poses. Yeah, there's some rampant, if you like, some with a, a one leg up. Um, some... It's taken me this long to realise that they don't all have five legs. That's a tail. <laughs> <laughs> Again, a perfect rendering artist on a horse. Well, that's interesting. Could we also have a rummage around the saddlebag? Just before we do that, um, 
decorative clay tiles. Are they movable? The ones that are in there, they are movable, but you notice there's a bit of a covering of dust on them. They look like they have not moved in quite some time. All right, so we'll probably need to find the other two tiles and put them in the right place, I'd guess. Or there's a code there we need to work out. I don't know how you code from positions of horses, though. <laughs> hmm. All right, I would like to also then go and have a look at the saddlebag that was mentioned. You get right up close to the horse. She doesn't even blink. It's like you're too small to be worth her notice. You reach for the saddlebag. You stick your hand inside. Doesn't have much. All you find in there is a folded up piece of paper. Looks like an ad. I didn't remember this room having this many images, but it does. I like images. These are clues. This is good. <laughs> it's all clues. Here we are. There's another one in the link here. When you have it ready, Tom, you can describe it for our audience at home. But if you want to, again, for all these images are available in the show notes for anybody who's following along at home. Not if you're driving, please. If you're driving, pull over before you look at the images. All right. This is an advert that says, what's wrong with your farm? No water, pests, bacteria? Farm Cures special mix will tell you. After Farm Cures diagnosis, I was able to fix my plants in five easy one-hour installments. One happy user. And there's a little graphic in each of the corners, a five-leafed plant in the top left. What looks like either a purple tree or a zombie hand reaching out of the ground in the top right. Not <laughs> sure which. Bottom right is a shaker of salt, which appears to be salting some water. Bottom left is a tube of, a toothpaste-like tube with a V on it, I think. Also, it's worth noting, uh, potentially, that the word <laughs> pests and bacteria are in green, are they? So no water is in red, pests is in green, and bacteria is in yellow. Right. Which is sort of like traffic light colours, but a bit out of order. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's all very interesting, but I'm not sure how that's <laughs> going to help us. Pests, and it's like pests is not a word, apart from steps, that's, uh, I can't see how that that could anagram to anything. I hadn't even um, thought of anagrams there, but... Uh... <laughs> well, they are in capitals, so I wonder... They, they, yeah. do, they, they seem quite vital words. All right, well, that's all good stuff. Shall we go and plug in our code and see if that does any good in the... Yeah, we've, well, there's, there's still a couple of things we can investigate later, but given we've got a thing we can do, should we go and do the thing? Hmm. Fair enough. Let's go back to the greenhouse and type in 22117 on the keypad. Each of those makes its little musical note, and then a little green light appears, and the door opens for you. Now that you're in, you can get a bit of a closer look at what's going on in here. The tools, they just look like tools that Lily might use to dig up or then trim some of the fruits or vegetables before boxing them up for markets. The hose, it's a hose. The plants are a nice little herb garden. There is one thing that you didn't see from the outside, and that's because the door itself was not transparent. You turn around and take a look at the back of it. There's a panel of buttons attached to some sort of miniature electrical looking box. It's got wires going out in a few different directions. And this, I believe, is the final image. The final image, though we know oh, more we went, images. We went, we went with all the pictures first. Yep. <laughs> yes. One could say it's inherent in the design of the room, but we'll blame our guests. <laughs> There's one final image for you and for the people at home. David, would you like to give it a description? Right. So we have a central panel that says Farm Deluxe Hydration. And there's various words under that saying indoor, outdoor, hose, water, antibacterial, anti-pest, constant hourly, weekly. There's a buttons under that saying current settings. And the colours of the buttons match the words in the previous clue. We've got a red button, a yellow button, and a green button. There's also uh, some squares, a plus, a minus, and an X, but uh, that is that is matching colours. Hmm. I'm going to just go and do the plan I had earlier. I'm going to plug the hose in. I'm going to wash whatever, that key on the roof down to the ground. We haven't got anything to plug it in yet. I'm just going to tick that box. The problem, you pick up the hose, you take it outside, you attach it to the tap, you turn the thing, and... No water comes out of it. Damn it. <laughs> we, we haven't turned on the Farm Deluxe Hydration System, yes, Tom. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I, I realise in hindsight that was obvious, but... <laughs> but you have right. to try. You won't know there's a puzzle unless you try. Okay, so the current settings currently say green, an X, and a dashed square. Now, what, what was the green word on the other 
poster. Oh, hang on, hang on. The settings button has a tiny dashed square on it, and there's a button with a tiny dashed square. I'm going to push the tiny dashed square button. You push that, and nothing changes on the current settings thing. The current settings one looks like it would update depending on what buttons have been pressed. Nothing changes there. So on the no water pest bacteria poster... Oh, no water is red. My problem is, I've got no water. I'm going to push the red button. All right, you push the red button. The green changes to red. You go back out to the tap, and there is still nothing coming out of that one. Hmm. I mean, at this point, I'm tempted to brute force this and just see what happens if I push each button. (laughs) A fair choice, except that you know that there is poison of some description going on somewhere on this farm. And if you mess with stuff too much, you might end up making everything an awful lot worse. You might make plants, animals, yourself sick. Who knows? So it's best to be cautious. I'm wondering, like, there's nine buttons, okay? And there are nine words on this thing. So presumably, one is for the the, the place that we're watering, one is for what we need, and one is is, is for the... like the rate. The flow, yeah, we've got constant hourly, weekly, okay. Ah, so we need to work out what what constant is. So, like, you know, there's like a dashed square, a sort of dashed square with with a solid top, and then like a completely enclosed square. Mm -hmm. So so I wonder if the completely enclosed square means constant, for example. Yes. So perhaps could we press that one and see if if that does anything? It's possible but again because this is the sort of game where unlike a normal one i am allowed to say no it's probably too risky until you know that that's what it does <laughs> right okay no, there please, will please, be a way to know for sure because like uh, we've got no. three there's nine buttons but they're actually in three bits there's there's the, the red green and yellow button so that's one sort of group of three Yes. There is a plus a minus and a times. That's another yes. group of three. And then there's the sort of th- three squares and with various shades of dashing. So that's the other sort of thing to it. What we need is the manual. That would help. I, I, we haven't actually gone and searched the entire greenhouse. We haven't had a look at the tools yet. We ha- let, let's have a look at the tools and the uh, and the plants. You see gloves, snipping tools, a variety of spades and trowels. All of them have traces of mud around the edges, which makes sense because last time Lily used them would have been last week right after Saturday's big rain. But beyond that, you see nothing unusual about them. So you turn around, you look at these plants, these, this herb garden. There's a decent variety here, and you're good enough at cooking to recognize many of the standard herbs. Each herb type surrounds its own of the little plus-shaped sprinklers, which look like they haven't been on in a while. That's okay, the herbs look healthy. You're pretty sure they're not supposed to be watered every day. But beyond that, again, nothing unusual. Plus-shaped sprinklers and a push button with a plus on it, on the hydration panel. Hmm. Yeah, that, probably that probably a mentioned. coincidence. Ha- has been mentioned <laughs> twice, hasn't it? So I wonder if we're going to find anything minus and time-shaped at some point. Have, have we got every? Have we looked through everything in this greenhouse now? In the greenhouse, yes. For the rest of the farm, still a bit to go. Yeah, yeah. Well, we haven't gone to the pigs and sheep, and also when you said a, a sort of like these are things around the property. Like, is there any? Is there, is there anything in the middle? Is it a central? Is there a, like a central building or farmhouse? To go no, in? nothing. Nothing special. Let's let's head to the vegetable patch then. There's still two locations that we were told about we haven't been to yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm going to go and have a look at the vegetable patch and the scarecrow. You head over to the vegetables. You make sure not to step on either the plants themselves or the cross-shaped sprinklers littered between them. The there ground here... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ground here is dry and crumbly. You hope whatever Lily's growing doesn't need daily watering. Fortunately, the vegetables seem to be in good health, and from what you can see, some are just about ready for harvest. They are red cabbages, big and round and just getting that deep purple colour you want. As you're looking at them, before you make it to the scarecrow, all of a sudden, the sprinklers go off and your shins get hosed. So you leap out of range, and then after about a minute, the sprinklers stop again. Great. Well, at least the ground isn't so dry anymore, and neither are you. So they must be hourly at the moment. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. The control panel is showing a cross and a dashed box and a 
and I just change it to red. The cross-shaped sprinklers are currently getting water, and it must be on the hourly basis. Why the hourly basis? So the options on the screen, three sets, indoor, outdoor hose, water, antibacterial, anti-pest, constant, hourly, weekly. Those are three sets of three. There are three types of buttons, each with three in each set. That must be on hourly. The odds of that being on weekly are pretty slim. If it just happened to get me as I was walking across, you wouldn't water it for like, you wouldn't water for like five, 10 seconds every, every week. That doesn't make sense. It was about so, a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the ground was very dry and crumbly. Okay. Yeah. It's like, I mean, yeah, we, we don't know for sure, basically, I think. So, so, so by, by, <laughs> by extreme coincidence, I, I stepped into the field at the one point in the week when those sprinklers come on for a minute. Okay. That is how writing works. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that means it must currently be set to outdoor and weekly. Plus shaped sprinklers are indoors. Cross shaped sprinklers are outdoors. The horizontal line, the minus sign, must mean the hose then. Um, okay, potentially. I would like to have a rummage through the scarecrow's pockets. So the poor guy, he, he looks a little bit down, literally. He's drooping. He's kind of flat and billowy. His pockets seem empty, but most of his body feels like a pocket at this stage. As you get up close, you can see he doesn't have nearly enough stuffing in him. He's got holes all over him. It must have just fallen out over time and no one's bothered to fix him. As you're going through him, you also feel something a little bit unexpected. There is a wire running down from his head, inside him, down to his belly, and its end is just sort of hanging there. And right where that wire ends, there's another one sticking up from the bottom of his belly. But when the two wires brush past each other, this is science, they give off some sparks. And you are concerned. Without anything to insulate that, this could be a massive fire hazard waiting to happen. Hmm. So we don't have anything immediately to connect those or disconnect those. But handily, Tom always carries with him a roll of electrician's <laughs> tape. <laughs> I mean, there are... I, I, we, we haven't looked at the animal enclosures yet, and they are wire-fenced. So I'm not saying we, we might be able to nick some of that wire, but I feel like we should have a look and, and check. It, have, we do, have we done a thorough search of the vegetable patch here? Yes. Then let's have a look at the last location. Let's have a look at the animal enclosures. All right. Which one first? Pigs or sheep? Which do you like? Let's go for pigs. Everyone likes pigs. So, yep, as you said, these uh, enclosures are made of wire, so you can see straight through. They're way too tall and barbed for you to scale, though. So inside this one, you see three well-fed pigs probably about three times as much as you weigh. Two of them are dozing, looking kind of bored. One of them is trying to roll around in mud and not having much luck because it hasn't rained in a week, so all it's got is kind of just an uneven bed of rock-solid clay, and it looks really sad about that. You search for an entrance into this enclosure, but you find there is a five-letter combination lock holding it shut. This is some sort of high-tech farm that uh, we're going to <laughs> This is all explained away by the intro where she said she made some quirky design decisions. <laughs> no questions need to be asked. Does there happen to be a minor-shaped sprinkler attachment anywhere? You do not see a sprinkler near here. Oh, that's a shame. Well, how would they keep the pigs nice and moist? Then? I'll drag the hose over later. It'll be fine. Um, can we do a, a, a... Is there anything more to search here? Is there anything more we can see? Not particularly. You're welcome to turn your gaze onto the sheep instead. Let's do that. There are four sheep, they're all thick and fluffy, and they're all standing around doing nothing. There's a little bit of grass growing at the edges, but again, most of it is just this hardened clay. It's a very flat, dull sort of area. There is a long water trough lining the fence side that's shared with the pig enclosure. You search for an entrance into the sheep area. There is a padlock holding it shut. Ooh. Okay, so, oh, well, that's well, probably where the, the key goes from yep, the top of the, so, the greenhouse. Okay. And to get that, we need to turn the water on. Um, hmm. The long water, uh, when you say long water off, is that inside or outside the enclosure? Presumably inside, inside we can't get to it. Yep. 
All right, so we've got a five-letter combination lock and nothing to go in that yet. We've got a padlock, and we hopefully know where the key for that is. And we've got a wire at the scarecrow that needs something doing to it, but we don't have anything for that yet. And we have this damned hydration system button that I feel like I'm so close to cracking but can't oh, yeah. quite yet. Hmm. So I keep looking back at the... the picture we've got of the the hydration system uh, if you want to role play this i'm going to walk back over there and look at it again Absolutely. yes you, um, other, i was about to say how could you look at the picture you're standing mm-hmm. by the sheep yeah let's so i'm pretty sure i figured out indoor outdoor and hose i'm pretty sure that the indoor sprinklers are plus shape wait hold on what's the difference between a plus and a cross shape that's just rotated <laughs> The, the positions that they are in compared to okay. the plants that surround them All right. really look either diagonal <laughs> or not diagonal. There's a little this way up on each of the <laughs> yeah, sprinklers. Okay. Um, so plus shaped sprinklers must be indoor. Cross shaped sprinklers must be outdoor. Hose must be minus. Makes sense. A hose is just a line. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> so that means that The colours must be... Right, so no water, pests, bacteria. No water is in red, pests is in green, bacteria is in yellow. That matches water, antibacterial, antipest. So I did do the right thing when I pushed no water. That's the red one. So it must be red. Right, so... No, I I pushed the red button. I'm going to push the minus button for the hose. Mm -hmm. And then... I am just going to try each of the other three because it doesn't matter right now. We know this is plain water. We know it's going through the hose. I can't cause damage by changing the frequency at this point. That's fair. Because I just want to turn it on. So I'm just going to try each of those three buttons until I can turn the hose on. All right. So with red minus and the current dotted box that it is now, you go out there. The hose sprays for about... It starts to spray. I guess it would go for about a minute and then it would turn off again. Okay, let's try the full box. All right, full box. A constant stream comes out and it does not seem to be stopping. I am going to wash the damned key off the top of that greenhouse. <laughs> oh, a bird comes and it steals the key. Oh, no, <laughs> it flies you, don't away. Don't you fish this on me. <laughs> don't you dare. <laughs> It's okay. The bird is very weak and (laughs) one spray of the hose and it drops that key and flees. Uh, The key washes right off the roof. It comes down to the ground. You even, you manage to do a perfect dive roll and catch it in one hand. (laughs) Amazing. Wonderful. Um, Is there anything else around there that needs water right now? Because otherwise I'm going to turn the, uh, I'm going to turn the hose off. Well, that's a, that's a point, isn't it? I mean, we don't know yet. Let's, I would say let's go and unlock the, the sheep enclosure and have a look at it and see if we need to water right, anything. Well, or well there's football. clearly a drought. I'm just, I'm just going to turn the hose back to weekly in the panel just to, uh, just to save some water. We might need it again later. Fair enough. So let's pick up the key uh, <laughs> and trot around to the sheep enclosure and try and undo that lock, the padlock that was on that one. It absolutely fits. You now have access to the sheep. <laughs> All right. That's not, a, that's not something I've been told before, but, but thank you. Um, let's let's investigate the sheep. <laughs> yes. The sheep have nothing more in particular to offer. They're all thick and fluffy. The closer you get to them, the more they try to edge away from you. They seem a little skittish. And, oh, man, sheep wool does not look as nice and smooth to touch as you would expect. It looks kind of knotty and a bit dirty. But you don't see anything spectacular about these sheep. What about the water trough? The water trough, surprisingly sparkling, very full. You don't notice any weird mold growths or anything that might look poisonous. Obviously, who knows? But as far as you can tell, all you've got is a very full sparkling trough. Hmm. Is it Is it like, can we see to the bottom of it? There's nothing hidden no, in the water. Hmm. So there's probably no point knocking it over and seeing if anything's in there. I mean, can we check around under everything like that? No, all you find around it is the ridiculously hard clay mud that is no longer mud. I'm, I, I mean, am I going to have to spray it? <laughs> can, can I get the hose over there? Does it reach? The hose does not reach this far. Hmm. You see the pig. You see the pig across from you that's rolling around on the clay, going. <laughs> that's the saddest pig noise I've ever. Heard. <laughs> 
I wonder if we should knock over this trough of. I was I was thinking about that. But the thing is, like, I also want to spray these sheep because you know. <laughs> Maybe once we we wash off all the dirt, they've got numbers written on them or something. I don't know. <laughs> so, no, one, so. two, three, and five. It's just a prank. Um, <laughs> it seems like the obvious thing to do is is tip over the water trough because we've got some very hard clay that keeps being pointed out to us and uh, and, and a big load of sparkling water there. So, <laughs> so let's do some trough tipping. It's deep, it's heavy, but its legs are pretty tall and spindly, so it doesn't take much for you to tip it over. The water comes flooding out. It splashes all over you. The sheep have to dart out of the way. The pigs get it too, since there's only wire between you. They don't get out of the way at all. They love it. And this clay, it had dried to a crust over the rainless week, and now it has turned into a loose sludge deluge. It's going everywhere. It's like the ground is melting. Ooh, what's that? Near your feet, something is being uncovered. Must have been buried during the last rains. It looks like a pair of shears. Interesting. Uh Uh-huh. Just when you think that's the most interesting thing about this mud flood, you look over at the pigs again. You assume all you'll see is them rolling around in it happily, but oh no. All the mud around the edges of their enclosure has been loosened as well. And as it slides away, you see a hole in the lower part of one side of the fence, a section where the wire has just been broken away. The hard mud was covering it up completely before, but no longer. And now those pigs are belly crawling out and they are now loose on the farm. Excellent. (laughs) Well, that's what we call free range bacon. Um, Um, Is the, are the shears in close enough to the fence that we can reach through the wire and grab them. Oh, those, they are very much within your range. They're basically right under your feet. Okay, I'm going to use them to cut a little bit of wire from the fence. These are not clippy shears, they're sheep shearing shears. That's a shame. I had a re- <laughs> I really need a piece of wire there. Oh, I see. You're going to use that for the electric thing. I, yeah. I just thought if we needed to get into the pig enclosure, we could just crawl in the way that the pigs have got out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get in that you get about halfway through the hole. This mud, you feel like you're going to sink in it a little bit. You also, you can't see anything exciting in the pig enclosure. All right. Okay. Why don't we go and shear the sheep? Because the, the sheep have probably had numbers sprayed on them, and then the <laughs> hair is grown. Um, I'm going to find these numbers one way someone's, or another. Someone's tattooed these sheep. Yeah. All right. Go, yeah. Good luck with your sheep shearing and the mud you're covered in. I'm going to be sitting on the side, just kind of smirking a little. How hard, how hard can shearing a sheep be? Like, can't, can't the people who do it for a living do it in like 30 seconds or something? Yeah. Surely an amateur can get it done in two in minutes. The, in the playtest of this episode, I proceeded to spend about 15 minutes singing the traditional Australian sheep shearing song, Click Go the Shears, and then trying to Google the origins of that song. It was interesting. <laughs> wasn't really podcast worthy material, but I did sing it Wild. for quite some time. Mm. All right. Well, first off, It takes you a good while to actually catch one of the sheep because as soon as you have picked up those shears, they're looking at you like you've got a deadly weapon. And then once you manage to catch one, like we said before, this wool is not nice and smooth. It's like one enormous knot. You're getting it stuck all over the place. The mud that's on you is getting all over the sheep. It's just making everything worse. You're hot and sweaty. You're annoyed. Uh, You manage to get a decent amount of wool off the animal, but it doesn't look good. Let's put it that way. But you you now have a good bag full of wool. Could we use this wool and knot it together to make some sort of insulating connection for the wire, I wonder? Or just stuff the scarecrow with it. Wool oh. isn't too bad at that. You take your new bag of wool, you head for the scarecrow, and you just start taking handfuls of it and stuffing it inside his body, trying to get as deep into it as possible, filling every corner. The scarecrow is so ragged that while you're stuffing, he actually falls clean off his steak. So now there's just a bare wooden stick in the middle of the vegetables. Perfect. Good for fighting off those crows, but whatever. So for now, you keep stuffing him on the ground. The only thing you leave space for is this wire. You carefully arrange the wool around it so that its path to the bottom wire is clear, but that both are totally covered around the sides. And when you do that, the two wires touch, 
and this time there are no sparks that come off it. Instead, a noise comes from the scarecrow's mouth. There must be some sort of speaker built in there. It's a bit quiet, a bit scratchy, but it sounds like music, like something from your childhood. You get down, you put your ear right next to it, trying to remember, and... And that's all quiet, and then suddenly, maybe because the wire isn't quite right, you hear a blast of sound come out next. Da, 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 da. It hurts your ears. Absolutely incredible singing ability. No notes. Well done. (laughs) You have no... You barely even catch what it was. I don't know. Did you catch what it was? Your ears hurt a little bit. Yes. I I feel like that might be E-I-E-I-O, and that's five letters for a combination lock. Ah, oh, very good. I was thinking <laughs> of the, I was thinking of the pattern of like you know, so it's sort of like top, 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 bottom, middle, middle, bottom. But yes, that would be that would certainly definitely be more sensible. <laughs> is is the scarecrow just going to ki- repeat that over and over again? Because if so, I would like to disconnect those two wires. Oh yeah. And... No, no, I'll just I'll just put it in the background of the episode. I'll just loop that <laughs> forever for the audience at home. <laughs> yeah, not a bad idea. You take some of the wool back out again, so it shuts off. <laughs> Uh, let's let's head back to the animal enclosures. I'm going to try E-I-E-I-O on the combination lock. The lock clicks open. You can fully open up the pig enclosure. The door opens. And as soon as you step one foot in it, right on the boundary of where the door was, you step on something. And you realize it's underneath this mud that's only been loosened a little bit over this side. But you brush whatever it is clean. It is a small tube of Vaseline. Okay. <laughs> it's like when you when you get, reveal something to the guests and they sort of go, "Why are you telling me this?" <laughs> <laughs> now, well, that sort of seems to match with the tube with the letter V on it in the bottom oh. left hand corner of yes, the. It does. Ah, hang on a second. Now, does this all match up? Is this is this really kind of a map? Because like the southwest, we have found this Vaseline. The, the herb garden is in the north west I still don't quite know what that top right thing is if I'm honest no I mm. that's still oh no I do it's red cabbage oh uh, okay it's red cabbage that's the vegetable patch right and and then the other one is the salt was sprinkling onto some water so like is that meant to be br- is that meant to be brine or something? It's like it, it seems like that's, that's something we haven't actually. Well, hold found. on. Well, let's have we just we've just unlocked something. We've now got a tube of Vaseline. Mm. What haven't we unlocked yet? We've we've mm. got the combination lock sorted. We've got the padlock sorted. They're gone. The pigs are still loose. I don't know what's yep. going on with them. Um, they look like they're having a great time. <laughs> we've solved the scarecrow. So the the only thing in my head that's that's outstanding here is the five clay tiles that and of course the mystery of the of lily being poisoned by yes. something well on yes farm. yeah I, I, the, the only the only puzzle that might <laughs> might unlock something further is Perhaps. is the five the five clay tiles other than that i think there's nothing else we can work on here am i wrong there no, hmm. yeah but um, i mean like there's we've just managed to just Destroyed a whole lot of clay by wetting it <laughs> with the water. <laughs> so, in fact, the, the other clay bit was the scarecrow, and that's got a bit wet now as well. So, um, if we if we were looking for some clay, I'm not sure where we would find it now. Mm. Yeah, it definitely doesn't look. These tiles, they just look like they are incidentally made of clay. <laughs> they're, they're, yes, they're probably actually made may, of plastic. Maybe I just used the word clay, and it was in my head too much as I wrote this room. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> It is true. In terms of the stuff that's on the farm, you have pretty much, other than these two missing tiles, you've kind of looked at and solved most of these things. Okay, so we're at the pig enclosure still, and you know, like we found the Vaseline. Yep. Oh, hang on. What, what, what sort of things... Right, I, I'm going to s- rephrase what sort of things you do with Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, in this circumstance of being in the farm... I mean, what sort of thing would Vaseline be useful for? If if, he, if something is unstuck or um... wait, what, is, is there still something? Did we leave something in the greenhouse unsolved? Uh, I think you are fine with that. 
I'm interested in that uh, we've, we've missed this thing at the bottom of the poster where it says, after Farm Cure's diagnosis, I was able to fix my plants in five easy one hour installments. Do we have to like set the settings again for, let's say, the red cabbage to, to sort of like for out, outdoor hourly and, and see if anything comes from that? I mean, Lily will be back in six hours. That might be enough to fix the plants. Um, True. But that would be a treatment, and you're sort of looking for a diagnosis. And how could you find out what's wrong? Yeah, because like, if you manage to put on antibacterial stuff on the red cabbages, maybe whatever is in antibacterial, it's like giving a human antibiotics when they don't need them. Maybe it just makes everything worse. I mean, it, uh, we haven't actually examined the red cabbage. I mean, you said it was like ripe and turning purple. Is there anything else uh, significant? No, they look about ready to pick. You reckon that if you can guarantee their quality, Lily will be shipping them out tomorrow. Hmm. They are on this poster also with the herbs, mm. the red cabbage, the Vaseline and the salt. Are these like the ingredients for, <laughs> like if you all mix, like mix some herbs and red cabbage and some Vaseline with some salt and, and water <laughs> and make a delicious yummy soup? Um <laughs> This salt is really bugging me. It's like, why, we haven't come across any salty water, as far as I'm aware. Have you not? Where have we seen brine. brine? We haven't seen any brine. Oh, pickles have brine. Pickles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, we can we can get all those four things. What do we do with them? All right. Do we have to? Oh, oh, all right. Do we have to know what that herb is? I mean, it looks a little bit like a basil leaves, but like. It's, Thank Thank you. <laughs> ah. it is definitely yes, basil. absolutely. You can cross-reference it to what's in the greenhouse and see that it's basil. And I used a picture of basil to draw that. And thank you. Basil, red cabbage, Vaseline, and salt or brine? Hmm. Um, Farm Cure's special mix will tell you. Well, all right, let's just try... And see what happens if we if we put salt, vaseline, basil, and red cabbage together. You grab all of those instruments. You take one of the spades out of the greenhouse and you dig up some of the cabbage for that. You pile up all those ingredients, and on their own they don't really do much. So you sort of get your hands in there, you mulch them together a bit, and eventually they start forming a thick, pale liquid. It's almost clear, but it's got a bit of pink from the cabbage. It's quite viscous. Feels like it would drip out heavy droplets if you needed it to. It's got a funny sort of chemical smell to it. It's definitely a special sort of mix. So presumably mm. we need to put that mix somewhere <laughs> or do something with it? Can we just put it on something and see if it... Yeah, yeah. if we just grow it, if we just Absolutely. put it on, on, on some of that, that sort of like nice moist pig earth. <laughs> The nice moist pig earth, when you put it on there, oh, maybe the faintest hint, like some of the pink disappears and turns a little bit clear, indicating, oh, there might be something not quite right here, but nothing extreme. Like it, You're not getting a very big reaction from this chemical you've created. But you've still got heaps more chemical and heaps more farm, yeah. so feel free. All right, let's try it on the sheep bit then. Sheep, even less of a reaction. Let's try it on the red cabbage soil. Nothing particular going on there. Again, maybe some tiny colour change, but nothing the exceptional. Yeah, keep going around. Ooh, that's interesting. Not on the herb garden, but as you're putting it on the herb garden, you get a, a little bit of splash off your droplets that you pour onto them. And inside the greenhouse, just on a random bit of floor, you do find a bit of it turns yellow, bright yellow, somewhere in the greenhouse. Something is wrong. So on the poster for Farm Cure, yellow is marked as bacteria. And if you keep sort of exploring around, you find that the closer you get to the tools, the yellower this thing turns. Right. Okay. Because red cabbage, I remember from my biology <laughs> days, this sort of kind of used as like a pH indicator, isn't it? For it some, is indeed. For, um, that felt like it? enough of a scientific basis to go with it as the vegetable of choice. <laughs> <laughs> so the tools I, I mean can we can we try the farm cure on the tools you pour out this stuff and yeah the inaptly named farm cure it's more just farm diagnose so you drip it right on the tools and 
each and every one of them bright yellow. So this is clearly where Lily has slipped up. She's not cleaning her tools enough. I mean, that's easily fixed. Except, I mean, what horrible thing must have gotten onto them? How on earth did it get here? Because there's no point cleaning them up if in the next couple of hours they're just going to get bad again. So you got to figure out exactly what has gotten these things so infected. So if she's used her tools and it's got bacteria all on it, then we need to find the place where the bacteria still is. Mm. Mm, but, the source I mean, of this bacteria. We've been putting the, the mix around various places. We've tried the vegetable patch. We haven't tried the stable or the pagoda yet. All right, which one? Uh, stable for the stable, yeah. All right, so you go down to the stable. That horse is suspicious. You start pouring it around and you're getting nothing. And in fact, you go over to the pagoda and apart from some traces on the vegetables that she dug up last week with those very tools, they give off a bit of a reaction. You don't get anything that seems strong enough to be a bacteria source. And so you just sort of stop and you think. And then you notice something a little bit off. You're looking out over the farm and you see one pig, two pigs, um, hold on, you see the third pig, it's inside the greenhouse. You are quite certain that every time you have gone in and out of the greenhouse, you have closed the door behind you because you're a polite person. <laughs> there is a pig inside the greenhouse and it is licking tools. Struggling to believe I'm going to say this, but can we smear the pink viscous liquid all over that pig, please? <laughs> you head in there. It's not easy. The pig's skin doesn't have much of a reaction. You try to get a little closer to its mouth without making it ingest anything horrible. The closer you get to its mouth, the brighter the yellow comes out of it. Oh, boy. Pig mouth bacteria, clearly not what you want to share. So... This should be a simple fix. Don't let the pig lick your tools. But how did a pig get in the greenhouse? Let's let's do a thorough search around for any holes that the pig could have got through. Yeah, the greenhouse, you absolutely would have noticed if there were a hole in it. There is nothing. Also, the door was now open when you went back in. I'm going right. to just close the greenhouse door and see if it locks properly. It seems to. Uh, hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm going to kick out the pig, mm -hmm. and I'm going to close the door and see if it has learned to open the greenhouse door. You t kick the pig out, and you watch. It tries to get back to the door. It sees that it's closed, and then, to your shock, it clambers its front legs up the door and starts snuffling around that keypad, and it starts pressing at the buttons until you hear those little musical-sounding notes play the exact right thing to get in. And as it is doing that, you realize what 22117 sounds like. It sounds like boom, 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 boom. So all that's left is to try and cure the vegetables. And to destroy that scarecrow forever so the pigs don't remember how to open doors. Oh! I had not made that connection until you explicitly <laughs> laid it out. That's okay. Apparently, pigs, in their eminent intelligence, uh, everyone's aware that they have, they can memorize simple musical cues if okay. they are played at them day in, day out. So, the last <laughs> thing to do is to go back to the hydration panel, push the yellow button, because mm -hmm. we know it's bacteria now, Keep it on the hose setting. Cool. Turn it back on with the constant thing and hose down the tools. Cool. Uh, how long do you want to be doing that for? Because you can't stay here forever. And do you know how long it's going to need? Oh, five easy one-hour installments. It's on the bottom mm. of the farm cure ad. Yeah. So one of these buttons is hourly. One of these buttons is weekly. Don't know which. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Because it started because it was on weekly when I got in here. Yep. Which was the dotted line. What's it set to at the moment for constant? The full solid box. Yeah. So the other option. The other option. All right. Fantastic. 
you turn on, you bring the hose sort of in, it does manage to make it in the greenhouse door, and you just sit it in front of the tools. It sprays for maybe 30 seconds, not as long as the weekly setting, and then it turns off again, and you expect that in another hour it will keep doing that. And by now, yeah, it's about five hours until Lily's going to get back, so that should time out perfectly. The tools will be clean. She will be able to use them to dig up her vegetables. Unless, of course, this pig comes back and keeps licking them. So, in fact, that might be the last problem that you've got to fix. <laughs> Get these pigs back to where they're supposed to be and stop them getting out again. So, presumably, us just asking nicely doesn't make them go back. What about if we go and get the scarecrow that's now off the stick and use that to sort of scare the pigs back in? <laughs> it is hugely successful. <laughs> They're kind of happy to be herded around. You think it's like a game to them, and they seem like they've been a bit starved of activity. So, yeah, th this could be the first fun they've had in a while. And then we just need to close up the hole with something. Yeah, as soon as you get them back in their pen, they start eyeing that hole in the fence like they're already planning to just walk straight out. So you best make sure that doesn't happen. Oh, also, one of the pigs looks like it's found something while it's been out adventuring. Not the greenhouse one, one of the other ones. It must have gone foraging. It's got a little cloth bag hanging from its mouth covered in dirt. <laughs> so you grab that off it. And looking inside, you find a huge collection of little rectangular clay tiles with stick figure horses on them. All right. How handy. So how, uh, you take a collection of how many are there? A lot. There are a multitude that contain as many different variations of horses as you could possibly imagine. Ah. Uh. Which yeah. is code for, if you know what you are looking for, you can find it. If you do not, right. it will be challenging. It is code for, no, Tom, you cannot brute force which two <laughs> tiles go in this thing. I, I was going to ask. There are, there are a thousand tiles. This is the you, advantage You know of... what I said? I immediately try to metagame stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is why we don't run a real physical escape room. Yeah. That's too we'll easy. Want... We can say we'll... no. I 100% once brute forced two digits on a combination lock by just <laughs> sitting there and just going through 100 combinations. So, all right. Um, and it was 99. That's how they get it, you. It was like 80-something. Like it was really annoying. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to rule something out. Just to, So we found these clay tiles in a pig pen. I presume this, this isn't the cipher known as the pig pen cipher. Oh, thank <laughs> God, no. Luckily not. <laughs> Okay, so fine. This is the so, last puzzle we need to solve is what we need to complete whatever this sequence is. Right. So I will say like, before you start that we very specifically added this puzzle in because we thought Tom and David would be good at puzzles. Let's add a little extra puzzle in. So huh. there, here you go. Not making us feel any better. Thanks. Um, so if you don't David, get it David's right good. straight away, David's good at puzzles. <laughs> I'm good at brute forcing and metagaming solutions. I'm not entirely <laughs> certain. So, uh, okay, let's work through obvious things this might be. Uh, it can't be a binary code because there's three designs of horses. There is standing, there is one leg up, there is rearing up. I think one of those is called rampant. I can't remember which one it is. Um, there are also only so many types of things that you can expect people to know. It's not like, it's not like a puzzle hunt where you can throw in anything because they've got the internet. Yes, we're not going to expect you to be able to dig up an ancient code that no one's ever heard of. That also means it can't be Morse, because True. Uh, we've got three designs. Even if one of them was a space, we've there's there's five items in there. It's, it's not Morse. Oh, we should have used Morse just because it sounds like horse. <laughs> horse code. <laughs> that, horse oh, code. you should have done. You should have done. Damn it. Right. End of the recording. We're going to rewrite this puzzle. Uh, we'll just <laughs> cut and we'll come back tomorrow. No, no. Right. I, I mean, like... Like, it could it be like a base three numbers or something like that? Like, 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 like just looking at that first line, it, it, like, if you count the number of legs up in the air, it's like, is that like naught one naught naught, for example? <laughs> and, and like the bottom one might be one naught 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 naught. Is it just we add up the number of legs on the floor? Is it so? Is it four plus seven, eleven? Is it is it fifteen? Is the that one? Well, that's that would mean quite, it's, that, it's that's an O. So that's quite nice as a letter. And then the next one is it's eight, the word horse. Ten, it's the word horse. It's H O R S E. 
Well done, David. Yep, if that's 15, <laughs> that's an O. The next one is going to be an 18, which is an R. The next one's 19, which is an S. So we're looking for an H, which is going to be eight, eight. I want to say. And I would yeah, like you to describe it in terms of pictures horses. of horses. Thank you very much. Not the number eight. <laughs> Please so describe to me the horses. Fully, two fully standing horses, yes. or if you want, four rampant horses. <laughs> And then the bottom one is going to be uh, one horse with one leg up and one horse with two legs up to make five on the floor. Well done, David. I just did not get anywhere near that. <laughs> you dig through your bag of tiles and you find ones that match those perfectly. You put them into the slots and the box lid clicks and it opens. A wild, pungent smell hits you. Inside. Okay. Not quite what you were expecting as help to fix a pig enclosure. You find a pile of huge animal treats. Okay, I imagine what we're going to have oh, so, to do uh, is put, sorry, put, put can, that... can I, can I, do, you mean, do you mean animal treats that are huge or treats for huge animals? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> can we give one to the horse? You go over to the horse. As soon as it sees that you have one of those things in your hand, its ears twitch. Very interested. And she watches your hand. And if you give one to her, she goes for it. She is very pleased with that. And she will go anywhere for one of those things. All right. Now what? <laughs> Do we yeah. ride out of town on the horse? <laughs> I was, I was um, about to suggest You're that. on your own, Lily. You're almost ready to ride off to the sunset. You're just going to stop these pigs from re-escaping. Mm. Can we position the horse as a guard? You, you take the horse over there, and she stands there. She doesn't seem like she puts her legs in a very good position to, you know, stop a pig getting out there. It looks like she could, but you have no way of guaranteeing she's going to stay there, blocking that hole with her legs. Oh, hang on. Can we dr get the horse to drag something heavy, like, say, like, like the trough, and block the hole up? It was big, but now that it's empty, it doesn't really have much to go on, and it just has spindly legs. You reckon a pig could probably get that out of the way with enough force. Why don't we wind wind the hose around the greenhouse and get the horse to drag the greenhouse? <laughs> to, to... <laughs> That's a strong horse. I mean, it is a strong uh, horse. You do note this hole, it's pretty much exactly pig-sized. So you don't need something that's going to block the entire thing, much like a horse's leg, just something you could put like in front of it to split it. Oh, well, could yes. you get the stick from before and put that in front of the hole? The old scarecrow stick, yes. You go back over to the veggie patch. He's still lying on the floor, a little sad. Oh, no, actually, you used him to shepherd pigs around, so who knows where he is now. Um, <laughs> David still got him. But the stake is perfectly fair. It's not too deep in the ground, so you can pull that up. You take it over to the pig enclosure, and you go, clunk, like you're putting a beach umbrella in the sand, and you try to get it down into the ground, right in the center of that pig hole. There's no way they'll be able to get past that, except it's it's kind of wobbly. You shove it deep down into the mud until you can't shove any further. Its top gets basically lower than your hips, but it's still sort of wobbling around, and you're worried that the pigs could still shove it aside easily. It just needs to get that little bit deeper. You just need to get its base into the solid earth. You're just not quite strong enough. But the horse is, so how do you convince a horse to stomp a stake into the ground? <laughs> Yes, I mean, do we have any more treats left? You got a buttload of treats. Get as many treats as you want to help that horse get to the right place. We we point at, at the stake and do a stomping action and hold up a treat. <laughs> she doesn't blink. She looks at you. She looks at the stake. She looks at the treat. Very long time. And then she lifts up one rippling muscular foreleg and she goes gunk, slamming her hoof down on top of the stake, sends it at least six inches through, not just mud, it must be solid rock down there by now. She tosses her head smugly, she grabs the treat out of your hand, and you are sure that that stake isn't going anywhere, and neither are the pigs. So, the pigs are back in, they can't get out, the antibacterial is antibacterializing, you feel like you have fixed this place right up. You can't wait to tell Lily that she can get her business going again. 
She should probably change the code on her greenhouse if she wants this to never happen again. You're also going to recommend that maybe she invest in some proper enrichment activities for those pigs because they are clearly way too smart for their own good and they are itching for some sort of entertainment. And musical scarecrows are not the right answer to that. And you have solved this room. Congratulations! Yay! (laughs) 